You know, even though Abraham Lincoln has been gone for 150 years, his immense legacy obviously still lives on today. John Wilkes Booth, he shot President Lincoln on April 14, 1865 at Ford's Theater in Washington. Lincoln, he passed away the next morning at a guest house across the street. And joining Andrew and I right now is Yannick Michkowski. Yannick is history professor and chair at Dowling College, and he helps us with all things in terms of presidential history. And paint a picture, if you could, um, for both the shock um, and the immediate aftermath uh, of Lincoln's death. Well, this is the first time a president had been assassinated, actually. Assassination wasn't seen as part of the American history tradition in American politics. And so it was very shocking to the nation, especially to, to, to Northerners, a successful leadership of the war. A lot of struggles during the war, especially with his generals and getting strategy in, in place. But uh, it did put uh, cast a pall on the victory, and it increased a sense in the North that there had to be some kind of retribution or, or vindication of, of what Lincoln had done. So, um, and, and if you could, I probably chronologically should have done this before, Yonk, but, but give the two weeks prior to his death as just the setup about the, you know, historical change that was going through the country at the moment and, and the divisions, obviously, with North and South. Well, just five days before Lincoln was assassinated, Robert E. Lee surrendered to um, Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse in, in Virginia. So that marked the formal end of the war. And so it, the, the nation, or at least the North, was, was finally in a mood to, to celebrate. And to have uh, this kind of a tragedy befall the nation, it, it, uh, as I mentioned, it cast a pall and it hardened the mood of the North. Was Lincoln held, particularly, I guess, in the North, in the same or anywhere close to the same level of reference in which, with which he's treated today? No, uh, there was a lot of criticism, and, and Lincoln had plenty of, of problems with, with wartime strategy. And uh, the, uh, toward the end of the war, a lot of Union soldiers were, were, were really being butchered, and, and Ulysses S. Grant got a lot of criticism as Butcher Grant sending, sending men to their uh, death. So, I mean, it was a four-year-long war, and it could have been shortened a lot. One of Lincoln's flaws as a military strategist and leader was taking too much time in finding the right general, relying too much on, for example, General George McClellan, who had a case of the slows, as Lincoln liked to say. Mm -hmm. Very cowardly leader. Lincoln should have gotten rid of him much sooner. So Lincoln's passing and, and the manner in which uh, he was assassinated, the shock and the pall that cast over this country. Give an idea what was on Lincoln's agenda uh, post um, Appomattox and, and Reconstruction and give the arc of history for what might have been. Um, again, as you mentioned, this was not a united nation and he in fact had a challenging re-election winning by a rather small margin. What do you think realistically with the finally of the Civil War coming to an end he could have done in the aftermath? Lincoln set a very lenient plan for Reconstruction, which reflected both his nature. I mean, by, by his very nature, he was a forgiving, lenient, charitable kind of person. And he even said that in his second inaugural address, uh, very famous lines, with malice toward none, with uh, charity toward all. And so he envisioned, he actually proposed a Reconstruction plan that became known as the 10% plan. Very lenient bar, just 10% of Southerners, once they proclaimed a loyalty oath to the nation, they could set plans for uh, rebuilding their, their strength. Uh, their states. He probably would have had to modify that and uh, become a little harsh uh, in deference to the radical Republicans, but Lincoln probably, given his political past and his political methods and, and just his personality, would have found a plan to work with the radical Republicans. Um, he was a master at finding good political compromise. Is it too far to go to suggest that if Lincoln had lived and served out his second term that the arc of history would have been different? There would have been a lot on the local level in the, in the South that Lincoln and other national leaders would have had to fight against. The, the uh, racism in the South, the, 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 the desire to keep African Americans down as a class, the, uh, the so-called mudsill class mm -hmm. as, as, as ex-slaves. Um, so Lincoln would have had to, to, to struggle against that. But um, I think Lincoln would have been able to provide the kind of national leadership in, in, in Congress and in the Republican Party to, to try to mitigate things and, and um, help the South accept the terms that they, uh, as a as sort of a conquered region, mm -hmm. that uh, they would have had to accept. Obviously, uh, through some great 
biographical work recently, um, film and other, uh, new generations been reintroduced uh, to Lincoln. And I gotta say, universally, I, I think people, regardless of their politics, say, this is what they'd like in a president because he put country first. He believed in the better souls of the country um, at great, obviously, sacrifice to himself. I, and I don't think in any way history has diminished that because there is no such thing as a perfect man, a perfect field general, per, whatever the case may be. Why do you think, beyond the obvious, that Lincoln has held up so well and he's held at such a standard? Well, part of it goes back to his famous nickname, Honest Abe. I mean, he was a politician known for his integrity, and he did put the interests of the country. I mean, he truly believed that America was a great experiment in Republican government that needed to be, be preserved. And so his, his goal was really to preserve the Union, but also to eliminate slavery. And he had a very good sense of timing when to abolish slavery or when to issue the Emancipation Proclamation to abolish slavery, um, how to work to retain the loyalty of the border states, how to um, lead the war, put in place a good strategy. I mean, just across the board, he was a good leader, a good party leader, a good politician, a good national leader, a good person to preserve the Union. And for all of those, he deserves a place in our heart as a very revered president. Mm. Well, it's uh, an interesting confluence of, of so many uh, dates in history going back 150 years ago from obviously uh, the end of the Civil War, in many ways, um, but yet the passing of a leader in, in such a uh, infamous style. Yannick, thank you so much as always. All right, everyone, please stay with us. When we come back, we got headlines from the Hudson Valley straight ahead.